This particular work that you see here will hit substantial completion before the end of the month. It's the long-awaited light rail connection to DFW Airport. We have your preview of the new station and find out when it could open. You've got rock and roll, you've got country, you've got people like Gene Autry. Music memorabilia coming to Irving. See some of what could be inside the Texas Musicians Museum. It works every part of your body, from your head to your feet. Taking the plunge into fitness. See what water aerobics is all about. Plus certifiably safer apartments and what makes this bus different. This is City Source. There is a new program to promote safety at apartment complexes. Hello and welcome to City Source. I'm Thomas Gandy. That story is coming up. But first, the long awaited light rail connection to DFW Airport is nearing completion. Talk to travelers inside DFW Airport and you're bound to run across experts on light rail. Most places you just get off and you're right there. It's a lot quicker and less hassle than even a cab or a bus or anything else. Yoda Aguilar's expertise comes from experience. I actually live in Phoenix and we have a light rail and I do use it. Outside, we found a more official expert. Federal Transit Administration Deputy Administrator Therese McMillan is here from Washington on a rare snowy day. She's getting a look at progress on the final phase of the DART Orange Line. The President in the State of the Union address calls for ladders of opportunities to be built with our transportation infrastructure. This is an example of that happening. The walkway that you're walking on right now, even though it's not completely enclosed, offers a great degree of protection. For DFW Airport reps led the tour, taking her down the same 400-foot walkway travelers will be on when this station opens fulfilling a long-held vision of light rail between the airport and the cities it serves. This is a really important milestone for the airport because rail service to the city center is something that every major airport in Europe has, every major airport in Asia has, and it's a big request for our international travelers, and it really does put us on another level. All this will be landscaped. Of this walkway leads to the platforms where the trains will arrive. Yeah. The snow had stopped most of the work while we were there, but this station is progressive. This particular work that you see here will hit substantial completion before the end of the month. Once that happens, DART will begin safety testing of the trains. DART expects to beat its planned December opening. We'll be ahead of December and everybody wants me to say the date. We're not quite ready to say that. We're certainly trying to be done in time for the State Fair of Texas. Exactly what the president wanted to yep. see yep. in terms of yep. investments. McMillan is here to draw attention to the federal contributions to this project. More than $60 million in stimulus funds and more. The funding opportunities that we were able to bring to this project were extremely helpful. Uh, for example, a $120 million loan that specifically helped underwrite the construction of the Orange Line. The Obama administration has been very supportive of transit. Well, we bring some of the money. You guys deliver the project. That's just what it's supposed to happen. Along with those federal dollars, a lot of other agencies have brought funding to make this happen. There goes the plane. Okay? There you go. Exactly <laughs> correct. Huge partnership with DFW Airport. Uh, they're building the station, we're building everything up to the station. Plus, there are the contributions of DART's member cities, including Irving. To bring in DART and the series of municipalities that that has really does mark a great collaboration regionally. The course, City of Irving uh, has been a great partner. But you've also got Irving plus this area. And once travelers leave the airport on light rail, the train's first stops are in Irving. Las Colinas is probably the largest if you think about it, the largest transit-oriented development anywhere around. And while we didn't really think about that until we opened the stations, Ben Carpenter did a long time ago. New research suggests more development ahead. DART just studied the system-wide economic impact, looking at building around its stations over the past decade. There's been about $1.5 to $1.6 billion worth of projects actually constructed around our stations today. What's even more impressive our projects under construction around those stations total about 3.5 to 3.6 billion dollars. As you're creating more jobs and more employment opportunities along the entire corridor, you know it's offering that uh, access as well. Therese McMillan and others here believe North Texas will see an even bigger economic boost in the years to come once these fences are down and this station opens. 
here for a conference with our uh, consulting group. These travelers, stuck waiting a long time for a shuttle, think the idea of light rail sounds great. They could have already been on their way. Heck yeah, be convenient, it's awesome. Bringing in the Orange Line to DFW Airport really does create a connection into the community that we have looked for for many years. We're looking forward to seeing the success of this project. And we have more news from DART. It is pursuing more grants from the Federal Transit Authority, this time for more new rides, electric buses. These are zero emission buses. The only battery electric bus in the world that can run 24 hours a day without returning to the bus barn to be recharged. We want to try to introduce those into our fleet. We're currently working with DART to acquire a, a grant. A federal grant application we want to make to try to secure some funding to help purchase nine electric buses. The bus repeats its route every hour or so, comes back to a common point, has a five minute layover. And so if I can give you a bus that we can restore an hour's worth of energy usage while it's doing its five minute layover and do that automatically, then that bus will run 24 hours a day. This would actually be the second zero emissions vehicle in the transit fleet. Our first of the electric light rail trains that are already running on the Orange Line through Irving is actually the first zero emissions transit vehicle in Texas. This vehicle is cost competitive today with a diesel bus. A transit bus in 12 years at today's fuel prices will consume about $600,000 worth of diesel fuel, just one bus. This same bus running on electricity off of the grid will cost $85,000 to $100,000 worth of electricity in 12 years. So you have a half million dollars in fuel savings. And then as a bonus, you get quiet and you get no emissions. We would like to have these in place 2015, 2016, if we were able to successfully get the grant. DART spokesman says current buses operate on compressed natural gas, which is cleaner than traditional diesel. The electric buses would improve that efficiency even further. Renovations at the Valley Ranch Library are just about complete. The empty space you see in this video from last year has been finished out to offer more space for library programs and services. The building will reopen with a ribbon cutting at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday, March 1st. Organizers say the celebration will include family activities and refreshments. In today's Crime Fighters, a new top 10 list. Irving police are sharing on social media these pictures of the city's 10 most wanted fugitives, all in hopes of getting them caught. Get a second look at these photos at facebook.com slash Irving PD. And if you recognize anyone you see here, call 972-721-1010. Police are also reporting an increase in thefts of cars left running. People sometimes leave a car while it warms up or while making a quick run into a convenience store bad idea. Please say never leave your car running unattended. And that is another way you can be a city source crime fighter. In other police news, a new effort to make apartment complexes safer. Brooke Pratt explains what it means to be Community One certified. On any given morning, you can find Song Kim and his wife in their apartment complex's gym. They say they enjoy apartment living here in Irving. But Mr. Kim's first priority in finding a place to live doesn't have to do with the exercise equipment, but with security. When I live here, I don't have any problem. I'm safe. Mr. Kim chose his apartment well. Britain Way is the first property in the city to become Community One certified. Multifamily properties present unique challenges and, and they can be dealt with, but it requires people who are willing to manage them well and maintain them well. And the Britain Way Apartments has shown to be such a, a fabulous partner in that regard. Community One is a brand new program designed by the Irving Police Department so that officers can work hand in hand with apartment complexes in hopes of creating a crime free environment. You want to feel safe. And if you know that the property is already willing to work with the police department, I think that lets you let you know, you know, that they have a vested interest in your safety also. We had to go through training, of course, and we had to, um, uh, after the training, we had to take a test, so everyone had to pass uh, the test. As a Community One member, Britain Way staff now runs criminal background checks on anyone applying to lease an apartment or become an employee. 
Leticia Harrell says she hopes that when people see these signs in front of the apartment, they'll already know something about Britain Way. This property works with the police department. Another way properties can curb and really prevent crime is by trimming back bushes and trees and making sure that locks and lights work properly. These are musts for Community One certification. If you have a property where the landscaping gets out of control and the trees are overgrown and you have lights out, that just invites criminal activity. The Irving Police Department hopes that more apartments will follow suit and become Community One certified. Officer Linda Muth says the importance of the program lies in the relationships built between officers and apartment staff. We will share information with them back and forth and if they hear stuff from us, we have problem residents that we're here continuously on, then we'll uh, encourage them to not re renew their lease or maybe even an eviction if it's criminal. The police department's goal is for residents to say, like Mr. Kim did, We are very happy. Brooke Pratt for City Source. Irving residents interested in running for mayor or council can pick up packets of the city secretary's office or get them on the city website. This year, the office of mayor and council places three and five will be elected. Filings are due February 28th. Here are other dates to keep in mind. Early voting is April 28th through May 6th. Then election day is May 10th. The city secretary's office can answer election questions. That number is 972-721-2493. There is also a lot of information at cityofirving.org. Utility customers have options to help them avoid the sometimes long lines to pay water bills at City Hall. Credit card and electronic check payments are accepted online at cityofirving.org. Look for the Payments tab around the middle left part of the page. The city says it's a secure system that requires a personal code to access. Customers can also use a credit card to pay by phone. That number is 972-721-3774. Also online at cityofirving.org, a new resource to update residents on road construction projects. Just click on the road construction sign on the middle right side of the home page. A new attraction could be coming to Irving's Heritage Crossing. We have your first look at what you can see inside the planned Texas Musicians Museum. This is his sixth grade annual. Collector Tom Creason believes this may be the first autograph from a Texas music legend. And if you look right here center, it is signed by Buddy Holly when he was in sixth grade. Combine that yearbook with rare records. One of the only known 78s that was ever made by Freddie King. Gold records. This is Freddie Fender. Posters and more. Grammy nomination plaque given to uh, Willie Nelson. And you have the makings of a museum. Just one problem, you're a museum without a home. Yes, yes. <laughs> Creason is curator of the Texas Musicians Museum, which most recently operated in Waxahachie. But right now, this large collection is in storage. I dig through it and I go, oh great, I remember this piece. <laughs> he brought a few items to our studio as he talks about plans to reopen the museum this time in Irving. Why Irving? We looked all over, we looked in Fort Worth, we looked in uh, North Dallas, everywhere, uh, Grapevine, you name it, and Irving really had all the tools that we needed and the building space and size that we needed. That building is here, 222 East Irving Boulevard in Heritage Crossing. It's a former car dealership. When you view this facility, it has a certain character age to it, I'd say like the 1940s or 50s. You can see the old hydraulic lifts are still on the floor, but they will be coming out. Just one small part of this building's extreme makeover. It needs some work, but uh, Tom Creason and his group looked at this building, they see some life here. The city of Irving plans at least half a million dollars in repairs. We are putting in funds to actually do the remodeling of this building ourselves. We own this property, uh, it belongs to the city. This is one of those catalyst type projects we were seeking that'll bring people and visitors to our downtown area to enable them to see the possibilities that we have in store. These old tin walls will be ripped out and replaced with something worthy of displaying this kind of music memorabilia. So what do you envision for this area in here? This would be the main display where we'll have all the exhibits and things. The space could also be used for private events. 
The concrete floors and exposed ceilings will remain. It's meant to be very open, very flexible. Then outside. In the dealership's glory days, this was the car display area. In the Texas Musicians Museum, this is going to be the Texas Music Garden. It will have stages and a covered listening area. Adjacent to that. This is envisioned as being the small cafe dining type area. You're going to use the parking lot across the street? Yes, that will be the location we have for the six community events that Mr. Creason uh, will bring to us. And when we have some of these outdoor concerts, which is scheduled as part of the agreement with the city, that will only serve to bring and promote downtown even more to the outside areas. And then here's another shot of Whalen. It will be a while before people can see these pieces up close, but Tom Creason cannot wait to show more of his collection. The world's largest Eric Clapton guitar. It was a piece that was put together for the Crossroads show. It's a 58-foot guitar, and we've actually found out that we can install it in our lobby way. I think we all know what SRV stands for. Yes, we do. Creason also uh, loves to share the stories behind the items, including this replica Stevie Ray Vaughan guitar. Stevie would sweat profusely when he was playing. So that guitar, he said it would be wet, because even when you pull out of the case the next day, they're just such a diverse amount of music, and even the other music form that actually developed here and was created here was called Canhuto and Tejano music. Music always draws people together to your areas. We found that to be a universal success. The city of Irving is optimistic that this museum will lead to more business in downtown Irving. We're already having discussions with related types of industry. It's not even open yet, and people are already interested. They know it's here, know it's coming and they're starting to inquire uh, about coming downtown. We're really excited about the opportunities that we have there. We're excited about the response we're getting from the community, and we're really excited about bringing in tourists from all over the world to downtown Earth. Coming up, getting fit while getting wet. But first, Web Watch, our most popular and most talked about videos online. Our story on the Special Olympics basketball tournament held at two Irving Recreation Centers remains at the top of the list for a second time. Our program is a really a great program. I really enjoy my teammates just hanging out with them. They're great to be around. And making a return to the web watch of our most popular online picks is our story from last year on renovations at DFW Airport. Rounding out the list, a fun story on a Harlem Globetrotters return visit to her former school right here in Irving. Uh, I grew up here, I was raised here, so just for them to share my success um, and then even maybe encourage and inspire other people to do what they want to do as well. In response, Linda Danko wrote, Hi, I'm a big fan of you guys. Love you. Hooray! Well, when I first read that, I got excited, especially with the four exclamation points and everything. But then I realized she probably was talking about the Harlem Globetrotters and not us, so then I resumed crying on the inside. Oh. If you missed any of those stories, find them at ICTN.TV. That's also where you can watch us live 24-7. Plus, catch us at YouTube.com slash The City of Irving. We have more than 1,000 videos for you to watch, and we always like it when you show us some love and leave us a comment. The robots are coming back to the Irving Convention Center. You may remember our story from last year on this action-packed robotics competition to promote careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. It was a popular story, so we are going back again this year. It's just one part of a busy season at the convention center. March 6th is the return of the Recruit Military Job Fair for veterans. March 7th through the 9th is the DFW Golf Show. March 13th through 15th is that robotics competition I mentioned called First in Texas. March 28th through 30th is an event for knitters and crafters called DFW Fiber Fest. Find ticket prices and a full listing of public events at irvingconventioncenter.com. So we are well into 2014, and it's a safe bet that by now those New Year's fitness resolutions have been broken. The city of Irving has classes that could help you get back on track, and they could involve getting wet. Again, here's Brooke. I like to exercise, so it's, uh, it's easier to exercise in water than it is to do it on the land. For almost 30 years, Irving resident Wayne McCullough has exercised at the North Lake Aquatic Center. He's still going strong in his shallow water aerobics class at the age of 82. I enjoy doing it. I, I would encourage other people to do it too. It works every part of your body, from your head to your feet, you know, so it's, it's a nice workout, especially for low impact.
Water aerobics classes meet throughout the week, and with open enrollment, everyone is invited to join. I think anybody who has trouble with their joints, you know, who, who can't move fluidly on land would benefit from it. Water aerobics has always been popular, but I would say that in the last year, our classes have grown. Instructor Beverly Gammon says she has a passion for teaching water aerobics because she can see the change it can make in people's lives. It's great as far as weight loss. It also builds lean muscle mass so that accelerates the metabolism. It gets you a break in the day where you can come, get your heart rate up, work range of motion, strengthen isolated parts of your body, have fun, socialize a little bit too. It's great. Now, deep water aerobics is a whole other level of physical intensity, especially for Ned Evans, who chooses to tread in the 13-foot pool instead of using a noodle while doing the workout. It's either that or sink, you know. So. <laughs> the resistance is amazing, and it's not nearly as easy as it looks. Yeah, you get through that, you're pretty well worn out. Classes go throughout the day for all ages, and open swim is also available at the Olympic-sized pool. The natatorium has something for everyone. We have aqua pilates, we have deep water aerobics, we have shallow water aerobics. We have kids' lessons that are just amazing. We have synchronized swimming team. We have competitive swimming team. Not only are there classes for everyone here, but they go year-round. With the removable roof on and the pool heated, Swimming here makes a great workout no matter the month. And it all happens here at this pool. We're really lucky here in Irving to have a 50 meter facility. I think anybody would enjoy it. If you're interested in finding out more about a class or for open swim hours, call 972-262-0621. Brooke Pratt for City Source. A big party for pets and their people is coming up. Get Rover ready because Pet Palooza returns to the Animal Care Campus with games, contests, vendors, food, and more. The event celebrates the fourth anniversary of the Animal Care Campus and it will cap off a week full of pet adoption specials. Pet Palooza is Saturday, March 29th from 10 a.m. until 2 at the Animal Care Campus. And if you don't have a pet to take with you, we have that covered. You can adopt. It's time for our Pets of the Week, so let's head out to the Animal Care Campus. My name is Mary and I'm down at the Irving Animal Care Campus. This is Smokey. Smokey is a nine-year-old male. He's already currently neutered and up to date on his vaccines. He's very loving and would just love to go home to his forever home and leisure around all day. Come down and meet Smokey today. Sassy is our second animal pick of the week. She is a two-year-old female domestic short hair. She's currently spayed and also up to date on all her shots. She is very fun-loving, loves to sit in your lap and be pet all day. Come down and meet Sassy today. Our third animal pick of the week is Harley. Harley is a male Chihuahua smooth hair mix. He is about four years old and is very fun and energetic. He is waiting for his forever home. Now with your $100 adoption fee, he will get a voucher to go towards his sterilization because that is not current. Come and visit with Harley today. All right, thanks a lot, Mary. The Animal Care Campus is located at 4140 Valley View Lane. It is open Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. Then on Saturday, the hours are 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. A lot coming up for you on the next City Source, and right now, here's what we're planning to bring you. The empty space at the Valley Ranch Library looks a lot different now. We will show you the celebration as the building reopens. Plus, see the new kiosks at DFW International Airport that can add convenience at customs. Email us your thoughts on our stories. The address is ictn at cityofirving.org. We may read some of your messages here on the show, or you could always comment on our videos at youtube.com slash the city of Irving. And that's it for this edition of City Source. We leave you now with a look at the Quad Rugby Tournament at Center Park Recreation Center. Thanks to everyone who was a part of this one, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.